Hey, what's up guys? John here. The Surfside building collapse in Miami that occurred roughly a year ago, they just reached a settlement for $1,200,000,000. That's how much insurance companies had to come out of pocket. Over 30 different carriers came out of pocket. One billion plus on this situation. 98 people passed away. Now, what's ultimately happening now is we all have to pay attention to what's going to happen to the insurance industry across the entire country. It's not just going to be in South Florida, Miami. No, insurance companies are all paying attention to this massive payout. And what I think is going to happen is that these insurance companies, as well as other insurance companies, are gonna start reassessing future risk with policies, and they're gonna start looking for ways that they can recoup their massive losses. And how are they gonna do that? They're gonna be increasing rates. And how is that gonna impact people that have condominiums? Well, we're gonna likely see more and more increases in areas that are risky in the eyes of an insurance company. We're gonna see rents pick up in a lot of areas in which Landlords have some of these nice units and now they need to, you know, incur some new losses. They're going to push it onto the consumer. That's essentially how it always goes. When one party gets hit with a new cost, they try to just push it down the line and have the next person pay for it. Well, now with this whole situation, I think that this is going to be a wake up call to the real estate industry in Miami and to other markets, potentially Los Angeles, potentially certain areas of, uh, I mean, there's, there's so many different areas that I could list that would be in an area or in inside of a certain category in which would offer more risk, right? So a billion dollar Surfside Settlement Signals Condo Association Construction Insurance Premium Hikes. This is also gonna impact people simply that wanna go out there and build new units, getting that construction insurance, it's costing so much more now. The billion dollar plus Surfside Settlement marks a milestone in the lawsuit over a deadly condominium collapse. It also reveals the role of real estate insurance and it's harbinger of premium hikes that could reverberate across the industry. The insurance carriers for 31 entities are contributing 1,200,000,000 in total disbursement. All who settled have denied any wrongdoing and liability. While condo and project construction premiums were steadily rising in Champlain Tower South collapsed last summer, killing 98 people, the cave-in sent condo association insurance costs skyrocketing, could push construction insurance premiums even higher. The settlement, which breaks down each contribution, is a clear record of developers and construction companies' exposure in a deadly calamity. Insurers are looking and going, my God, if we touch something that has this type of issue, we are potentially going to have to pay out big money, said Keith Carroll, principal of Jensen Beach, based Rick Carroll Insurance Agency. As a result, their appetite has waned, and those left offering coverage in a lot of cases, they are taking away coverage. And we're already seeing this too in, in South Florida. We're seeing a lot of big insurance companies saying, you know what, it's not worth it. Because there's so many different scams. There's like roofing scams where a contractor may come out to a, a property owner and say, you know what, we can, we can replace your roof. It'll cost you nothing. Sign this contract. And then the, the homeowner would sign the contract. Then the contractor would, they would put a uh, policy against, or essentially a request to get the new roof. Then the insurance company will come out, they would look at the roof, say, no, we don't need a new roof, there's no damage. And then essentially they would go to, they would essentially start a lawsuit. And then the insurance company would say, you know what, it's gonna cost me more to fight this than just to pay out. And then they end up paying out and the contractor gets paid, the homeowner gets a new roof, and then the insurance take this massive loss and they pass it on to more consumers. But this is becoming a widespread problem. And what we're seeing is insurance companies leaving because of this and additional costs and additional losses. And so now what he's saying is that this is likely just going to continue, right? Carriers, the losses and in, in insurance companies leaving just going to continue. Carriers still willing to insure will face less competition, so they will be unafraid to increase premiums. Well, of course, if you have 50 insurance carriers all offering coverage, and then 20 of them leave and there's only 30 remaining, those 30 are gonna realize that they have more pricing power. They can increase They can increase rates, right? And there's nothing, you know, there's less competition in which is gonna keep the rates low, right? So it's just gonna be, it's gonna be harder and harder for these homeowners and renters. Increased premiums in the, in the past six to nine months, many master condo associations saw premiums double and unit owners saw them rise at an average of 30 to 40% and as much as 50%.
According to Mark Friedlander, spokesperson for the Insurance Information Institute, a New York-based industry developer, Henry Torres, who's a president of the board of the Merrick Manor condo project he built in Coral Gables, said the association's insurance rate went up 75% this year. Think about this. If you bought a place in Miami, let's just throw an easy number out there, a million bucks, and you put 200 grand down, 20%, you financed 800 grand, you did it at a great, you know, you locked in a 30 year fixed rate at 4%, we'll say. Maybe your monthly payments are four grand. Well, your insurance, your HOA dues, let's just call it a flat 1500, probably average in, in Miami, in a nice building, right? So you're all in 5,500 bucks. Well, now we have 20% in real inflation, 20, 30% real inflation, many would argue, right? So your costs are going up for a living, and now, their insurance rates are continuing to skyrocket in which the HOA is just gonna build into your policy if it's not included in the HOA, right? So what we're left gonna see is this affordability crisis. People aren't gonna be able to afford it. So instead of the anticipated 25%, so it jumped 3X, and he expects a sting as well when he takes out a construction insurance policy for a project till start in eight months, we are going to be paying for the Champlain Towers through our insurance companies for a while. Developers opting to build oceanfront projects next to aging buildings will be hit hardest for insurance premiums. A development team led by David Martin's Coconut Grove based Terra developed 87 Park next to Champaign Towers South. It allegedly defaulted on the cheapest yet most destructive, disruptive methods despite development. Inspectors warns of damaging vibrations to nearby buildings according to... So what we're also going to be seeing here too is we're going to see more and more uh, protections. Insurance companies are going to go out there doing more research, doing, they're really going to gauge risk on every single policy going forward. When they have losses that are stemming, you know, 50 million, 100 million, a billion dollars, and they all have to get together and, and come out of pocket, they're going to be doing so much homework. It is going to get so hard to get cheap and affordable insurance in, in beachside communities in South Florida. There's no doubt about that. It's going to get harder and harder. I believe what's going to happen is very similar to what the uh, CEO of Redfin said. He said that if you want to live in South Florida, you're going to have to be wealthy, and meaning you're going to need to pay all cash or self-insure because it's just going to get so hard. Some people are going to get displaced. So I think that these, it's going to be curious. I'm curious to see how this all plays out with these large luxury buildings. If you have 500 or 400 or 100 units in these properties and People just simply can't afford the premiums, can't afford the increasing HOA, and people start moving out and they can't sell these other units, then what ultimately happens is that it's gonna impact everyone else in the building, right? So it's gonna be unique, it's gonna be interesting, we've never seen anything like this. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be also kind of different too because of the supply chain issue. We're seeing it taking them longer, longer to get items to actually fix properties and it's harder to get labor, affordable labor. So their costs are going up across the board. What do you think about this entire situation? Do you think that's gonna impact all of South Florida? Do you think that's gonna impact Los Angeles and all these other markets over the next 18 months, 24 months? All of which, Jerome Powell is increasing interest rates. So the cost to borrow money is going up, insurance is going up, cost of living is going up, gas is going up, everything is going up, right? It doesn't make sense. Real estate real estate's going to be uh, the big question mark, especially in South Florida. What do you think about this? Drop your comments below. Hit the like button. If you want to get on the YouTube grind with me, do videos with me, be a part of my community, need help with real estate, you want to invest when the market crashes, or maybe you have credit, you need some assistance fixing your credit. If you need to have credit issues and you want my team to work with you, cashnow.video. Cashnow.video. You'll get access to my YouTube course. You'll get access to me and my cash flow to blueprint which comes with about three dozen bonuses, lease agreements, basically everything you would ever need as a landlord. Basically everything. I can't predict the future. Maybe you'll need certain things in the future, but everything that you will most likely need is included. And uh, it's 119 bucks a month, no contract, no commitment. It's a ton of value. Uh, subscribe here and subscribe to my second channel. It's gonna be a call-in show starting this upcoming week. And uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, everything's in the banner. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.